Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about a new Spider-Man miniseries. Now, this is one that I've been wanting to talk about on this channel for a while because it's just so good. This is a three-issue miniseries called Spider-Man Death and Destiny, and it opens up with some of the dangerous New York City nightlife where a couple of gangsters are hanging an associate out the window by his feet and questioning him about some money before they let go and let him fall, forcing the webhead himself to jump in, web him to the wall, and then crash through the window, kicking both of the gangsters right in the face and you can see over the course of this fight there are cameras webbed up in the corners of all the rooms getting multiple angles multiple action shots which is pretty crazy when you think about it because he literally went through set up the cameras left waited for them to almost drop him waited for this man to almost die and then came back so he could get a story out of it one of the men pulls a gun out of his pocket shoots spider-man obviously dodges it webs it up and pulls it away from him before dodging an additional attack from the other guy spider-man then rips his cameras off the wall cops come through hearing all the commotion bust in and see the criminals strung up by webs already with the man himself long gone we then get a shot of the current daily bugle paper that says super cop killer at large webbed menace continues to elude police with other headlines like spider-man should fry as a quote from one officer and city still reeling over loss of a true hero and an editorial section that says who will be his next victim by j jonah jameson now who is this true hero that was lost who was the cop that was killed supposedly by Spider-Man? Captain Stacy himself. If you've ever seen the Amazing Spider-Man movies, where before Gwen Stacy herself dies, her father, the police officer, is actually killed by the lizard, that's what this is. Except in the comics, it wasn't the lizard, it was Dr. Octopus. See, what the movie did differently from the comics is it made Captain Stacy one of the biggest critics of Spider-Man instead of one of his biggest supporters. Around this time in the comics, pretty much everyone disapproved of Spider-Man, even most of the police, and it was kind of like the entire city had taken the J. Jonah Jameson approach. They all disapproved of Spider-Man. They all kind of were out to get him. He was public enemy number one. So the police aren't okay with him. And the only one, the only one that didn't feel that way was Captain Stacy himself until he died by Dr. Octopus's hand or tentacle, and for some reason, the blame has now been shifted to Spider-Man. So that is what this story is focusing on. That is where we're at. Gwen Stacy is still alive at this time, as is Harry Osborn and MJ and Flash Thompson. Kind of that good, cool college age of Spider-Man comics. We then jump to the Daily Bugle, where J. Jonah Jameson is sitting in the dark of his office. Peter is outside, wondering where he is and if he can talk to him. Robbie is telling him not to go in there, warning him he doesn't want anyone in there. But Peter insists, buzzing and buzzing and buzzing, trying to get a response response before Jonah answers back, didn't I make myself clear? I want to be left alone. And on the other end, we hear, hey, it's, it's Robbie, JJ. Parker's here, says it's urgent. Jonah then snaps, send him home, anywhere but here. And on the other end, we hear Robbie going, okay, Jonah, no, wait, don't go in. And then we see Peter make his way in, say, top of the morning, Mr. J, have I got something for you? And Jonah then launches up from his chair, you deaf, Parker, get out of here. Peter says, not so fast, JJ, I've got something you want. He then hands him a manila envelope and says, just for you, my favorite publisher, long as the price is right. Jonah then looks over the photos and says, what is wrong with you? That wall crawling thug murders the most beloved beloved officer in the city and you bring me shots of him playing boy scout peter insists they're good shots mr jameson they're crap he says you want to sell me some pictures get me the good stuff you know what i want and take these with you peter makes his way out the door nah keep them for the scrapbook mr jameson you might get something out of these yet we then see peter leaving passing a couple of cops reading the newspaper on the street saying i don't get it stan with fifty thousand officers on the job spider-man should be an easy grab guess a lot of the guys thought he was on our side we then see peter showing up to his class just as it's ended he passes harry on his way out and he says gee you look like a roommate i used to have funny harry peter says his teacher professor warren sees him on his way and says mr parker close the door son we need to address this emerging pattern of missed classes and falling grades yes sir i you're one of the most talented science students esu has you have the scholarship to prove that but i have to tell you if this keeps up that scholarship is in jeopardy do you see the seriousness of that? Of course, sir. If I could just have a few days, I'll give you the few days, son. But it's the next time, and the time after that, that concerns me. Are you sure there's not some way I can be of help? With the recent tragedy, I wondered if just a few days, that's all. Very well. But just in case you ever need to talk, the professor hands him a card. Peter leaves the room to see Harry waiting for him. Harry? He says. What, you're surprised to see me? He says. I guess I've been hard to find lately. Don't tell it to me, Petey boy. Save all that for Gwen. He then watches Gwen as she's walking away, still mourning the loss of her father. He hasn't even talked to her yet, but little does she know. He's as broken as she is. How is he supposed to comfort her when...
He walks out the door, frustrated, still without speaking to her. The next morning, we see Peter in the apartment that he shares with Harry, looking over his web shooters that have malfunctioned. Melted? He thinks to himself. Forget it, Peter. You have enough to think about, like losing your scholarship, not selling a single picture in weeks, or sleeping for days. Doc Ock is still hiding out, and if that isn't enough, he looks at a picture of Gwen. Get out of here, Peter, before Harry wakes up. You got the extra film you came for. Don't think of the other things. And even if those shots won't sell, you'll make someone pay. Anyone who's ever had anything to do with Dr. Ock Octopus. Make them all pay until they lead you to him. We then hear a news reporter talking about the current state of the city as Spider-Man fights a group of criminals on a roof. Spider-Man has played no role in the recent drop in criminal activity, so says the mayor. He instead credits police efforts to find the costume fugitive with the drop. But an anonymous official told Action News that Spider-Man has snared three dozen criminals in only three days. That number is growing hourly. The official went so far as to wonder if this is the work of only one man. Might we now be dealing with Spider-Men? A small all legion of arachnid-like vigilantes? Either way, no criminal seems safe. We then see the hole that Dr. Octopus has been hiding out in, tinkering away at his tentacles, thinking to himself, impatient? Yes, but your public flogging makes the wait worthwhile, Spider-Man. Soon I'll come for you. You can twist until then. We then cut to the bugle again, where Jonah's screaming, Parker, you think I'm stupid? You moron? These are the same shots you tried to sell me two days ago. Tell me, Parker, for all the pictures you've shot of this webbed menace, why weren't you there that day? The one day that mattered most. Those pictures I could have used. Now if you'll excuse me, Parker, I have to be somewhere. We then see everyone, and I mean everyone, at Captain Stacy's funeral. We see Gwen, Jonah, Robbie, MJ, Harry, Aunt May, all the cops that were friends with him. Everyone is there, except one person. We then see Gwen as she's leaving the funeral, getting into the back of a town car, and as she sits in the back seat, she says, oh, it's you. And Spider-Man is sitting in the other seat, saying, you need to know what happened. And he tells her that Dr. Octopus is the one that's responsible for killing her father. She laughs. Face the truth, she says. Everyone knows who killed my father. It was you, Peter. I know everything. I know how a spider bit you and gave you your powers, how you didn't use them to stop a burglar, and how he then killed your uncle, and from that you learned some great lesson that with great power must also come great responsibility. But if you'd really learned that, my dad would still be alive. You killed him, Peter. Maybe someday you'll kill me too. No, no, no! Peter launches up in his bed in the middle of the night, walks over to his dresser, opens up the drawer, and pulls out a piece of film. Just like Jonah had said, why wasn't he there? Why didn't he get pictures of that day, of that incident? He was, but he's been too scared to look until now. He starts processing the pictures so that he can finally face the truth. He thinks the most horrible thoughts to himself as he's in the dark room, working away at processing these photos. Are you ready, Parker? He says. Ready to watch a man die? Ready to watch the father of the girl you love surrender the last glimmer of his life? Pray to God that you are. Pray hard. Ock was getting too powerful. His control over the arms were too great. The formula I shot at him was only meant to block the mental connection, and it worked a little too well. We then see Doc Ock's arms start to go haywire and crash into a chimney, sending the bricks exploding everywhere. He continues, and Captain Stacy must have. Oh no. We then see the debris flying down, almost about to hit a kid, before Captain Stacy throws himself in between, pushing the kid out of the way and dying in the process. Please forgive me. Peter thinks, forgive me. We see his swollen, bloodshot, red eyes, a thousand yard stare as he watches Captain Stacy die a second time. He rushes out of the dark room, starts digging Professor Warren's number out of the trash, calls him up, and tries to talk to him. And I just love the dark, super depressing tone of this book. I know it sounds kind of sadistic to say, but the tone is just perfect here. The art matches it in a modern but retro way that I really, really love. And you know, after we've covered stories like Batman First Night on this channel, I think I don't don't really need to repeat myself when I say that retro stories like this are so amazing to like see these critical events in the character's history in real time play out again in front of you. You know, Mythos Spider-Man was another great example. I think it captures the emotional weight in a brand new and refreshing way. The creative team here did such an amazing job. Let me know if you want me to continue the series. But yeah, that is the video. Thank you for watching.